hey guys welcome back to another video welcome if you're new don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get right into today's video so for today's video i'm gonna start by unboxing a nail drill that melody susie sent over for me to review and try out for you guys um and this is basically what it looks like i also got some of the small sanding bands and their mini mandrel drill bit so let's go ahead and get right into the unboxing since it is smaller, I am going to start out with the small sanding bands. Um, this is basically what the packaging looks like. A lot of brands have been coming out with these and I really like them. There's a lot of different things you can do with the mini mandrel drill bit and I just love the size of it. I feel like these are perfect for Joe X nails if you want to get around the cuticle area. You want to get in those really small spaces that the normal size drill bit cannot get to. I feel like these are very great for it. Um, and I love these pink sanding bands. Like, it just makes it so much cuter. Um, and yeah, this is basically what it looks like. It looks like a regular sanding band, but just in a mini size. And these drill bits are in the 180 grit. So, these are perfect for the natural nails. Um, you don't have to worry about damage. Um, if you wanted to, I'm pretty much sure you could use it to, like, file over the nails and get it smooth everything. Like I said, it's very great for, like, natural nails or joe x method and here's what it looked like on the drill bit i'm pretty sure you guys already know because i use these a lot now from other brands but this one is pretty nice as well i love that the color is almost like a light pink or purple color i couldn't really tell the difference but it's such a pretty like soft pastel color i have that link below if you want to check it out but now get it into the actual drill so let's go ahead and unbox it as always it comes with an instruction manual it tells you everything you need to know about the drill how to use it the controls it labels everything so you know exactly what button is which also what i really like looking through the book it shows you like if something is wrong with the nail drill it shows you how to basically correct that problem and if not there's also like customer service emails on the back that you can contact if you are continuing to have trouble with the drill contact them and they will help you with your problem or replace it which i'm pretty sure like melody susie has really nice drills um, like the quality is just so amazing. They sent me so many drills and like each one just keeps getting better and better. So I highly doubt you would even have a problem with the drill. Like um, I feel like at the most it might be damaged from like getting shipped or whatever. But even that is not the case for me. Like I just love everything when it comes to these um, Melody Susie nail drills. They're really high quality. But yeah, inside of this first box, as you guys saw, it came with two different drill bits. It come with these here, um, which includes a normal size mandrel drill bit. Also, it comes with some sanding bands, which look like they are really coarse. So do not use those on your natural nails. But it also comes with a needle head bit, a cone bit, safety cuticle bit, a large barrel, and a small barrel. I feel like these are more for like nail prep. So if you are a beginner, this is perfect for you. It comes with a handpiece clamp that you can attach to the side. Um, and that's how I like to do my drills. Um, it also comes with like the little white handpiece tray where if you just want to display on your desk, you can just set the handpiece in that. Um, and also the wall adapter. And also this drill is rechargeable, so it does not need to be plugged up to an outlet the entire time you're using it. I love rechargeable drills. It makes everything so convenient. Um, and this is what the handpiece look like. It is so gorgeous, y'all. I love this like muted pink on here. I love this style. It has a really nice weight to it. Um, it doesn't feel cheap. Like you can tell this is high quality. And also it has the unlock and lock feature, which I love when it comes to drills because I know a lot of the cheaper ones, like it doesn't have the lock and unlock feature. You just have to like shove the drill bit down in there and it just doesn't feel secure at all. So I love the lock and unlock feature when it comes to nail drills. And this is what the drill looks like itself. This is so freaking gorgeous. Gorgeous. I love it so much. I'm not sure how many colors this drill come in, but this white is so sleek. It's so pretty. I love the details on the side, like those little indents. I love that pattern. Um, and there, I just gave you guys a, a 360 on what it looks like. And at the top of the drill, of course, it comes with the speed dial. If you turn it all the way to the right, that is the maximum speed, which I believe goes up to like 35,000 RPMs. And I will show you guys what everything looks like, um, the sound test and everything. In the middle, it comes with a forward and reverse button. Um, it doesn't have any labels, but I believe if you are right-handed, you want to work with it in the forward direction. If you are left-handed, you want to work with it in reverse. On the far right, that is where you plug in the handpiece. And over on the bottom, this is how you are charging it. So yeah, that's pretty much like the overall look of the drill. Like I said, I like it. It's so cute. 
Um, and once I plugged in my handpiece, I'm going to turn it on. I did have to turn off my lights because with my lights, you could not see like the LED screen. So this is what it looks like on. And like I said, it does goes up to 30,000 RPMs. It shows the battery percentage, which is pretty nice charged. Um, and also it comes with, you see me kind of moving back like the forward and reverse button. Usually to indicate if it's in forward or reverse, it comes with like an F and R. This one didn't, it just came in like circle arrows going in like different directions that may confuse some of you especially if you're not familiar with how drills work but if you're right-handed you want to work with it in forward or if you're left-handed you want to work with it in reverse now let's go ahead and get into the sound test So when it comes to the sound of this drill, I feel like it's pretty quiet. You could barely even hear it when it's up to 35,000 RPMs, which is the maximum speed. So, um, and usually I don't even work over like 15,000. So yeah, this drill is going to be great to use. Um, also one thing I wanted to point out, I love the fact that the motor of this drill is like so efficient. Like usually you, sometimes you see drills like on a highest speed and the drill bit just looks like really wobbly inside of it. This one, you can barely even tell it was on, so I really like that. That just gives you so much more control. It's not going to wobble while you're, while you're using it. Um, so yeah, I really like this drill. I have it linked down below for you guys if you want to check it out. This will be a great investment if you are looking for a nice drill to use if you are a beginner. I know these can be pricey, so make sure that you use my discount code, which I believe is key 12. If not, I'll link it down below as always for you guys to check out. And I will be using the drill later in the video, but for now, let's go ahead and jump into today's application. Um, I'm going to be doing some poly gel nails today because in one of my previous videos, I was asking you guys to comment some things you want to see. And in that particular video, I was encapsulating some like flowers for spring and someone wanted me to encapsulate flowers but with poly gel so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I've already applied my nails and right now I'm just taking some base coat and just going over my natural nails and just a little bit down where I glue on my nail tip. This is going to reinforce my nail because I do have on a peel off base. Um, usually it is recommended that you apply base coat before going in with your poly gel application. But for me, I don't really feel like it's necessary. But um, if you want to take that extra step and allow your poly gel to adhere, um, go ahead and do so. But I'm just going to go ahead and carry on this little bit of base coat I have and start my application. So I'm going to be using this Kiki color from McCart. And this was not really the color I wanted. I wanted something a little bit more nude. Kind of like that acrylic color I was trying to explain. Like how it's nudish. But it also has like a slight bit of pink. Um, It's not really opaque. It kind of looks sheer. That's also what I wanted. Like I just, I don't know what it is. I cannot find this color nowhere. And I might actually have it. I don't know. I just don't know where to look in my collection. But um yeah i just went with this one because i also really like this color and also i like mccart poly gel so just a basic way i love to do my applications is put a line going down my nail recently i have been doing like the two beat method where my first beat covers the entire nail i feel like when i first started i did try to like break it up into sections where i just put my first beat over the nail tip and then my second bead goes up where my cuticle is and then just blend it down to my first bead. But for now, I don't know. I feel like this works best for me because I don't like to have my nails super thick. So my first layer is kind of like that base. And then the second layer is just building up my cuticle area, my apex. Um, and then I'm good to go. So I just put a line going down my entire nail using my brush. I um, mean, these brushes are just brushes from my old poly gel kits. Um, I have them all in one place, so I just grab them whenever I start to do poly gel. And I'm also using 91% ice purple alcohol as my slip solution. There are other slip solutions that you can get from Amazon, but alcohol for me works pretty great. Um, and then I just start to pat the poly gel down the center of the nail, spread it out to the sides. Um, and I normally don't like drag the poly gel. I just go in tapping motions, just um, patting it where I want it to go. And once it's covered over the surface how I want, then I'll go in and start to smooth it out. Once I smooth it out to my liking, I'll go ahead and cure, make sure my free edge is straight. 
um and then i'll go in with my second bead which is mostly up at the cuticle area um and i do like to tuck in the poly gel like right up at my cuticle area um i don't like to push it up that much i kind of have my brush angled at like a 45 degree angle so that way um it's almost like it's building up for my apex if that makes sense um and that way once i go to file it's easier to seal my cuticle um and then yeah just go ahead and brush everything down blend it out make sure my sides are straight make sure there's nothing on my skin and once i'm satisfied with it i'll go ahead and cure it and move on to my next nail and that's basically how i apply my poly gel like it's super easy there's nothing really else to explain i feel like because it's just super easy to apply poly gel um i know if you are a beginner it may be a little bit harder because you need to get like the feel of different poly gels you need to learn how to control the pressure of it because for me i know a lot of times when i first started i was just pressing the poly poly gel down making like dents in it and it would just be so uneven to where i would go in with more poly gel and soon enough once i was satisfied with it it was just like super thick um and since my filing skills weren't that great i would just like not foul too much i thought they were good and looking back at my nails they were super thick so yeah that's basically how i like to do my poly gel now and also just make sure to be cautious of how much poly gel you're using a lot goes a long way because this is like a thicker product and yeah pretty much after each layer i'm satisfied with it i'll go ahead and pop it into the light and i'll be repeating this process on my pinky and my thumb and i'll just go ahead and let you guys watch this part play out So after curing my three nails that I'm doing full coverage poly gel nails on, 
um i am going to switch over to my index nail and my ring finger and i'm just going to be doing a light simple ombre as you guys see i only added just a tiny bit of poly gel and i'm just going to use enough to make sure i can cover up my nail bed area and where i glued on my nail tip i don't want that to show through my design so i'm just doing a really nice and thin ombre just to cover that up and once i'm satisfied i'll go ahead and do my other nail and pop those into the light as well and if you are enjoying today's video so far make sure to go ahead and give it a like subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment down below it will really help my channel out and i really appreciate all of you guys' comments giving me feedback on how i should do my giveaway it really helps me a lot so yeah i just wanted to say thank you for that So after I went ahead and cured all my ombres, I'm going to be taking some blooming Gel. And I also have a white gel polish. This is my go-to gel polish from Bomb Nails. I love the consistency. It's super white. Um, but I wanted to do sort of like a quick marble. And usually I would use base coat. But I'm going to be applying this with a dotting tool. Which is not really like how you would normally do it. Um, especially with one color. I know sometimes if you have like multiple colors, you can just kind of blob them on the nail. Take a dotting tool and swirl them around. But when it comes to one color marbles, a dotting tool is just not ideal. So I wanted the blooming gel to make the gel polish bloom out once I apply it. So that way it kind of feels more of like a brush ombre, if that makes sense. I just wanted this to be as simple as possible in the easiest way. So this is the way I'm going to be doing it. Also keep in mind if you are doing like blooming nails, like blossom nails, keep in mind how much blossom gel you use is how much it's going to spread. So if you use a lot, it's just going to like spread like crazy. So always be mindful of that. For me, I only added a very thin layer because I'm not going to be adding too much gel polish anyway. As I add my gel polish, I'm just kind of doing like slanted lines in the direction I want my marble to be. And basically the blooming gel is going to do all of the work for me, which made it super easy and very beginner friendly this way. So if you've been struggling trying to do marble, I know marbles will be very cute for springtime. You can do pastel marbles. If you're struggling to do marbles with like brush or base coat, whatever the case may be, this is definitely an easy way to do it and also if it's not bloomed out enough you can allow it to like sit there and allow the blooming gel to bloom just a little bit more spread out to your liking once you like it you want to go ahead and cure because if not it will just keep blooming and sometimes it may mess up the design so once you're satisfied go ahead and pop that into the light and continue doing your other nails and then i'm going to be doing that same thing over on my ring finger Now that I got my marble nails cured, I'm going to be taking these flowers here, which I got from Bomb Nails in a PR package like a while ago. I honestly didn't think I was going to be using these, but I decided to use these for today's video. Just get a different type of flower because I know I use the ones from Amazon a lot, but these are shaped different. They're different flowers, so I wanted to go ahead and use these for today's video, and I did pick them out in yellow, um, sort of like a reddish pinkish color and also an orange. Once I got all of the packages open, I'm going to be taking some base coat and just painting that where I want my flowers to be. And these lay down so easily. I love these so much. Like, if you're having a hard time encapsulating flowers, if you have a hard time laying them down, like they just stick up too much, these are so great because they laid down and kind of almost melted into that base coat. They were really easy to encapsulate. Um, and I'm going to put like four flowers on in both of my marble nails. Once I get my placement right, I'm going to go ahead and actually I didn't cure. Um, I'm figuring out my placement, but I felt like they were a little bit too empty. So I'm going to use these here, which I got from Amazon and they're linked down below in my Amazon storefront if you guys want to check them out. But they're not like complete flowers. It's almost like little stems of flowers. I did go ahead and cut up some of my orange and my yellow because I did want this to be mainly a yellow and orange nail set. So I'm only going to be using those and like the little small ones just to add more of that color into my nails. And I'm just placing them where I want them to be like throughout the nails so they don't look super empty. Once my placement is to my liking, I'm going to go ahead and pop those into the light and repeat that again on my other marble nail.
and that went by pretty fast like I said it was very easy to lay them down and apply so now it's time to encapsulate and of course I'm going to be using some clear poly gel the one I like to use is from Macar. I really love the consistency of it the texture um it doesn't flood the cuticle it goes exactly where you want it um and see at this part I feel like I don't really have to explain the encapsulation so I will just go ahead and let you guys wash this out I did speed it up so it doesn't take too long and i hope you guys enjoy and yeah by the way the only nails i did add clear to is just my marble flower encapsulated nails because um when i'm using like solid base colors i like to just build them up to my liking using that color so i'm not going to be encapsulating my other nails i like those the way they are um, i just thought i would kind of throw that in there so you guys know So now for my filing, um, I'm going to be using the e-file that I unboxed in the beginning of the video. Usually I would show my hand filing. Um, I did record it, but I just decided not to put it in the video. Since this video is going to be a little bit longer, I wanted to include a little bit more of my nail filing than I usually would. Just so you guys can see like how this drill works and how it works for me. Um, I decided to keep that out and just go straight into my e-filing. Um, but of course I did file my size and go over the surface a little bit, make sure everything is nice and even. Now I'm just going to be cleaning up my nails a little bit more, sealing in my cuticle area, cleaning up underneath and just basically looking at my nails from all directions and just seeing what needs to be fixed with my e-file. With that, um, I'll just go ahead and do it until I'm satisfied with how these nails look. And pretty much I do like this drill overall. I love how it looks. I love how it works. It feels really efficient. Like even with this um, mandrel, a mini mandrel drill bit at that, like with deep oaken, you can see the dust coming from my nails is doing a pretty good job and this drill is only at about 10,000 rpms i believe when it comes to debulking the nails um i would recommend you using like one of those other drill bits where there's like the metal ones the carbine whatever they're called i would recommend those when you are um debulking the nails but this drill is really powerful it's doing a very good job at removing product even with a sanding band so i would definitely recommend it if you guys have been looking for another drill remember that my discount code is linked down below for melody Susie. i'm also using their dust collector which works pretty good you always see it in the back of my videos when i'm filing and with that being said i'll let you guys go ahead and watch the rest of my filing Thank you. 
So after my filing and I got my nails all clean, this is what they look like. Now don't mind the cuticle area of my middle finger. My nails did pop off and I had to reapply them. They end up popping off again. So um, at the ending clips, that will not be a problem. I kind of fix it up a little bit. But for my nail art, like I said, I did want this to be an orange and yellow nail set. So I did take some gel polishes from nail reserve which are pretty much what i wanted i did pick out two different color oranges because one is kind of like a softer orange and then the other is like a neon i wasn't sure which one i wanted to go with so i just got both of them and to start off my nail art i'm going to be doing some yellow fringes on all of my solid nails using my kara sky excel liner brush to create my smile lines once i get my sides filled in i'll take the actual brush from the gel polish bottle and just work in the rest of the nail. So the original plan for these nails, I wanted to airbrush, like do like that really cute airbrush look on top of a French and make like an, an Aurora type of circle in the middle, but that did not work. However, I am still going to be using my airbrush, but um, I kept a lot of my clips out where I messed up. So I just kind of wanted to get like an ombre look to it. Um, when my airbrush didn't work, I even resulted to using pigment powders, but that didn't work either. So I just kept all of that out just to keep the video to a reasonable length. Um, and this is actually the footage before it ended up working. So I ended up using an entire different mixture of ratio, um, gel polishes or whatever, but I did want to keep this in so you guys can see how I'm doing it. Also, I am using some alcohol for my first time. Like I said, this is like before, it didn't work. And then I remember for my first design ever I used as airbrush, I did use acetone for my mixture. So for when my airbrush did finally start to work in that mixture, I did use acetone from Kara Sky. But yeah, that's basically how I ended up putting it in my little airbrush container, gel polish holder, whatever the thing is called. Making sure to give it a really nice mixture because you don't want this to be like clumpy coming out. You don't want it to get stuck in your airbrush nozzle. 
um and then this is after like all of my mistakes you see the pigment powder back there on the paper towel it was just a mess and since i was having like so many troubles i tried it so many different times like it was just like i said it was a mess so i wasn't even going to record this part after my second mixture in the airbrush machine i did my thumb off camera and i was just like okay i'm gonna go ahead and just cure it um and then i end up adding layers and i thought okay so maybe this is what i need to do um, so the way it ended up working is doing layer by layer. You don't want to add too much of this um, spray on the nail at once because it may create like wrinkle lines. It may start to get air bubbles in it and it's just not going to look how you want it to look. So um, what I end up doing whenever you see me pulling my nail away from frame, that's just me popping it into the light and then I'll go back in add another layer of it. Um, I think I did about three layers and for my third one I did aim more for like the tip because I wanted that part to be a little bit more opaque. Um, obviously my ombre is like going up towards my French. So yeah that's the way I end up working that out and I love the way they end up turning out so I was so happy that I was finally able to get it right get my mixture right and on top of these ombre Frenches. I know you guys have seen that like 3D trend that's going around. I think those are so cute and I wanted to try it. So I'm going to be using some of this Builder Gel from Model Ones and I felt like it was the perfect consistency to try it. Um, so I'm just going to be getting my nail brush again and I'm going to be trying that out on my ombre nails. And again, I was having so many problems with it. And for some reason, my lines were just so uneven, so messed up. And the way you want to do them, like you want to start off the line thick and then make it go into like a really thinner line so yeah my lines were just so inconsistent I didn't like it I kept removing them and it was just again a big mess so when I tell you I tried so many times I tried so many times like it was just so much footage I ended up keeping out of this part but eventually I started to just like not overthink it I was just like whether it looks like the pictures on Instagram um you guys will still get the point so I ended up just doing my lines not really thinking about it too much and that's when I started to like how they were coming out or I was um satisfied with them it wasn't it still wasn't how I wanted them to be but I was happy with it from like my previous tries and so once I finish I'm gonna pop that into the light and then go ahead and repeat that on my pinky nail and this looks so simple like if you look at the pictures it's just like you're placing the brush on the nail and just swiping it down but when I tried it, it was just so hard to do. Like, it looks simple, but it's, this is one of the things where it kind of just takes practice. Um, but for the most part, I did like how it ended up turning out. Um, and like I said, once I finish, I'm going to go ahead and cure it. And now we can go ahead and apply the top coat. So for the top coat, I don't know how other people are doing it because when I put my top coat on, it kind of take away from the 3Dness. I kind of want it to stay there. So if I try this again, I would probably want to go with something that's like non-wipe so it doesn't get sticky and just apply it over my top coat because when I apply the top coat and just like going over those grooves, it just kind of takes away from the 3D. But in a way, I did still like how it looks with the top coat. So like I said, I wasn't complaining compared to all of my mistakes. I loved how it turned out. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much how I'm going to finish off today's set. Just add on my top coat and cure that in the light for 30 seconds. And once I'm finished, I'll be back to show you guys how the finished set looks.
Of course, I did go ahead and add some cuticle oil and once I rubbed that in to re-nourish my cuticles, this is how the finished nails look. And I love these. I love the colors mainly. Um, I feel like my favorite ones are the ones I was having the most trouble on, which is my 3D ombre French nails. Those are so cute. Not only that, I do love this color combination so much. It's so bright and like vibrant. It feels happy. I love it a lot. Um, and also the flowers are really, really cute. And I don't want to make this outro long like my other ones. I still have some footage to get of these nails. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this video here. Thank you guys for watching. And keep an eye out for whenever I hit 80,000 subscribers. I will be doing another giveaway. Everything I use will be linked down below. Make sure to use my discount codes. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up today's video. Let me know what you thought about today's set. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.